Okay, a lot of people have asked me to reply to a pro-Holocaust propaganda piece put out by YouTuber Hunter Avalone. So, he's got over half a million subs, the video has over 100,000 views, uh, and it's got over 10,000 upvotes, which is kind of horrifying. So, let's just check it out and see if he says anything meaningful. And of course, Hunter, if you want to defend your anti-vegan position in debate, I'm happy to debate you. I'm sure Vegan Gains would be happy to debate you. So, you know, just step up to the plate. We're, uh, we're waiting. Let's check this out. Have we got a show for you. Vegan. 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 Hi, kids. Never eat stinking meat, only veggies. If you even look at a cow and think of a steak, God will throw you into the bowels of hell where the golden calf will eat you. What? Is that, like, meant to be funny? What's up, everybody? It's Hunter Avalone here, and welcome to another video. Today, we are talking about vegans. More specifically, vegans. It's time to stop. Time to stop what? Opposing the Holocaust? What's your case for that? Now, am I getting on camera today to tell you how all vegans are terrible? Of course not. Not all vegans are crazy, and I already know I'm going to get com- Not all vegans are crazy, and horrible was the first word he used, right? So. I don't just accept the not all. I don't even accept that vegans are horrible or crazy at a disproportionate rate relative to the random population, a random sample of the population. So if you want to make either of those claims, you can provide statistical evidence. Otherwise, there's no need to say not all. You don't even have a case that it's above average. Comments like, well, Hunter, I'm a vegan and I'm not a bad person. Sure, you aren't a bad person because you're vegan. You are a bad person because you leave desperate comments like that. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, this is a, like, I don't even know why I'm commenting on something like this, but I guess it seems a bit desperate to be like, I'm not bad. Like, sure, fair enough. But I don't think that a desperate person is a bad person. I don't think vegans should make comments like that either. I think they should just ask for an analysis that shows that vegans are disproportionately X, whatever X is, uh, relative to the general population. And if Hunter can't provide it, then he's just making baseless claims. Veganism was once a bad thing. Now, it's a horrible thing. All right, so what's the case for that, right? What's the case that opposing the Holocaust is once bad, was once bad, and is now horrible? Was that the word? Awful? I don't remember. Veganism was once a bad thing. Now, it's a horrible thing. The horrible, yeah. So what's the case that opposing the Holocaust was once bad, now horrible? I'd love to hear your argument for that. Veganism has always had its fair share of crazies. Right, so I'd like you to show that vegans are disproportionately crazy relative to the general population. And actually, additionally, let's say you can show that. I'd like you to show that the uh, disproportionate representation of crazy people among vegans relative to the general population is in some way due to veganism, right? I'd like to see some evidence there. But lately, crazy vegans have teamed up with crazy liberals to concoct a recipe for suicidal thoughts. According to a 2018 Gallup poll, liberals are 2.5 times more likely to identify as vegans than conservatives. When I first saw these numbers, I had to ask myself, why? Is veganism and liberalism now some kind of package deal like a bundle or a, or a, a bushel? The answer soon dawned on me, however. When I read that according to the same poll, vegans make up only 3% of the population. Such a small amount of the population, yet such a large majority of complaining, whining, and letting everyone know they're vegan, even though it was already obvious because their bones are weaker than a damn celery. So vegans make up the majority of people complaining and whining. Uh, so I'd want to see a statistical analysis that shows that vegans whine and complain at a higher rate than the general population. Uh, and then vegans make up the majority of people telling you they're vegan. Well, no shit. <laughs> I mean, do you think that conservatives make up the majority of people telling you they're conservative? I mean, that seems like it's going to apply to any position there, bud. I don't think that... It's that often that a liberal tells you they're a conservative or a non-vegan tells you that they're a vegan. <laughs> what kind of a point is that? And then vegans have weak bones, weaker than celery. I'll take that to be hyperbole, but 
you know, weak bones, just show the evidence that vegans have, uh, you know, weak bones at a higher rate than the general population does. Stick. So a small minority constantly whining, demanding that the spotlight constantly focuses on them 24-7. And... Right, I'd like you to show that vegans do that at a rate that's higher than a, just a, than the general population. And then... Let's say you could do that. I'd like you to show that vegans do that at a higher rate than other groups that are organized around some issue. Like, I don't think vegans talk about their pet issue more than, you know, people who hold other, like, maybe political positions talk about their pet issue. And demanding that people change... At least I haven't seen the evidence that that's the case. ...their way of life to conform to a vegan lifestyle. Right, so I would be curious how you resist that, okay? Now... <laughs> whether whether vegans do that disproportionately relative to other groups that have a change that they want to see made, I don't know. But that's that's just a separate question. I'd like to know why you would resist that point. So if we replace all the animals with humans, I think that you would probably tell people they have a moral obligation not to support that holocaust. Now if we switch it out with animals, you don't feel that moral obligation. So I'm wondering what's true of animals that if true of humans would cause you not to feel that obligation in the human context. Is it just me, or does this sound a bit similar to other progressive movements? Ah, uh, okay, the good old, if you don't like progressives, you shouldn't like veganism shtick. Well, I mean, you could be a conservative vegan, right? Veganism isn't inherently tied to progressive ideology. You could be a progressive for some set of reasons and be a vegan for some other reason, or you could, you know, um, you could not be a progressive and still be a vegan. I'd like you to show why one necessarily entails the other. Today we are going to be looking over a few stories of some kooky vegan activity, beginning with Natalie Portman. Kooky vegan activity, okay, so we're going to cherry pick um, what Hunter takes to be examples of vegans doing stupid shit, and then cast shade on veganism via those examples of what Hunter perceives to be vegans doing stupid shit. So we're not going to get an actual argument against veganism itself. We're going to get guilt by association with things that Hunter finds stupid. Cool. Great argument, bro. Or as I like to call her, Natalie Porterhouse Steak. <laughs> like, cliche what are you Hollywood about? Liberal. Is that supposed to be funny? Like, what are we, what are we doing here? Well, Natalie Portman is also a cliche Hollywood. That was a fake laugh if that wasn't obvious. Vegan. According to RaiseVegan.com, Portman delivered a stirring speech on May 1st where she claimed veganism was feminism for female animals. I'm gonna have to stop you right there. I'm pretty sure animals already walk around naked, make obnoxiously loud noises, and have a complete and total lack of self-awareness. Honey, if you ask me, it seems animals already have feminism. So two things, you don't have to be a feminist to be a vegan, but secondly, I can see the case that Portman's making. She's probably saying something along the lines of, look, if you're against these various forms of female exploitation, like sexual exploitation or whatever it might be, I mean, we're just saying the same thing, but with respect to animals. That seems like, you know, I personally don't make arguments like that. I would sooner use the most general argument possible, which is just a kind of consistency argument. You say, why would you, you don't support the human holocaust, you're apparently support or are neutral to the animal holocaust what's true of the animal that if true of the human would cause you to take that neutral or positive attitude to the human holocaust but i can understand on a psychological level why you might want to make a case like what uh, portman's making there if someone's really committed to feminism maybe it's true that a case like that could open their mind easier than some other line of argument but here we're seeing this really bad attempt at making veganism into some kind of liberal cause it looks desperate, and it really doesn't work very well. Okay. Um, doesn't work well. I'm not sure what the evidence for that is. Um, seems desperate. I don't really agree. It's not obvious to me why it would seem desperate. You could you could let me know if you want. Um, and making veganism into a liberal cause. Well, I mean, she's at least trying to connect it to a liberal cause, which is feminism. Is that would we call that a liberal cause? Um, I don't know if that language is perfect, but whatever. According to we call it like a left-wing cause though. Yahoo lifestyle, Portman's veganism is her way of a, a mostly left-wing cause. Advocating female animals' rights, emphasizing the pain of female animals at the brink of the dairy and egg industry, both of which exploit the female animals' reproductive abilities for commercial satisfaction of the masses. Only after Right, and the, the reason that's kind of like hard for a feminist to resist, right, is because 
you can literally use the exact language they use about women and just apply it to animals and it's still accurate language so it seems weird for them to suddenly not care about the very arguments that they make when there's just a minor tweak made about who we're talking about so i can see why on a psychological level that kind of argument could be persuasive to someone who's a feminist now i have some in fact this is going to get off point i have some sort of um what's the word apprehension about arguments like that because i worry that um making arguments which connect veganism too closely to a given political ideology can kind of polarize the other side against it now that's just speculation i could it could turn out that the data just doesn't bear that out right but that is a fear that i have that's at least worth mentioning i think that the safest bet is probably to keep veganism apolitical but you know either way i i might just be wrong about that i don't know either way the 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 core is that you can the the important thing to realize is that even if people are going to make these kind of arguments and connect veganism to political ideologies that hopefully everyone can acknowledge that you don't need to hold one of these political ideologies to agree with veganism right you could have reasons for being a feminist that don't extend to animals you could have reasons for being a vegan that don't extend to feminism you could you could be a vegan without being a feminist you could be a alt-right vegan i know a few after i became active in women's issues did i realize that my veganism was related to those very issues said the actor to a crowd of upcoming future adding and emphasizing how dairy and eggs don't come from just cows and chickens they come from female cows and female chickens a crowd of upcoming future some really weird phrasing there well, you know, I have to I have to say this is a really great idea. Take something that everyone hates and mix it with something everyone loathes. Right. So, again, like you have to realize all these like subtle things that are just blended in here. Now, I would bet with like I'd be pretty sure Hunter would pull the it's just comedy excuse card to get out of the stupid claims in here, but you know, whatever. Um so Everyone hates uh, veganism or loathes it. Everyone hates or loathes feminism. I don't know which he's referring to in there when, like, he could be saying it, this, this is irrelevant. I won't focus on that. So anyway, um, point, point here is where's the evidence that most people hate veganism or hate feminism, right? You can show evidence that I think most women don't identify as feminist. So that, but that wouldn't be an argument that they hate feminism. And I think especially if you ask a question that um, gives a traditional framing of feminism that says something like equal rights for women, there is no way that the majority of people are going to say that they hate that. Um, with, uh, with veganism, do most people hate veganism? I really doubt that. And I also think, especially if you frame it as an animal rights position instead of using the buzzword, which might have some negative uh, no, I shouldn't call veganism a buzzword, but to use the, the term vegan, which might have some level of negative connotation, probably due in part to people like Hunter, who are spreading this pro-Holocaust propaganda. If you just talk about basic animal rights, I don't think most people are against animal rights. Um, but either way, if you want to make either of those claims, you know, just show some evidence. If you could produce evidence, I'd concede them. But the point is just that you don't show evidence, and everyone should notice how many baseless claims are just wrapped into the things that he says here. What could go wrong? I'm just having a really difficult time understanding how you came to this conclusion. I mean, yes, female animals are not always treated the best. Why would, why would you have trouble understanding that? There's issues like sexual exploitation that feminists care about. They happen to female animals. You know, like if you don't like rape, probably wouldn't like dairy. What would possibly be confusing about that? best but male animals are slaughtered and killed for meat frequently as well so how is this a female animals issue only that's a straw man i highly doubt that um portman or feminist vegans in general would say that uh veganism is a feminist issue only now you might actually be able to make the case that female animals have it worse i think that could be true um in fact I would bank on the side of that's probably true. I mean, the female animals are the ones who are uh, trapped in a cycle of rape and child theft and then murdered, as opposed to um, only having the, the murder component. So I think that you could probably make the argument that it's worse for female animals. I personally don't think that it's really worth gendering the issue. Again, there might be certain instances where it's like psychologically persuasive, but um, 
I think that what we're doing to male animals is so bad that even if you can make the case that female animals have it a bit worse, I mean, it's all so bad, we should just talk about it as a bundle. Um, but again, I don't, I don't want to brush over this. Um, you know, it could be the case that making those, like, arguments specifically targeted towards feminists is useful. I just, I have also, again, to draw back to this point, um, a bit of apprehension about whether that politically polarizes veganism and has maybe a locally positive effect with respect to convincing those particular people, but like a globally negative effect by like tying veganism too closely to a political ideology. But, you know, whatever. With respect to the actual issue, I don't think that the gap in suffering is so massive between uh, female and male animals that it's worth thinking of it as like a female specific issue. And am I actually saying that unironically? I think it's incredibly tacky to try and appeal veganism to feminism. This tacky though this is such a far reach it literally looks more desperate far reach though desperate though so these are just feels right it's not like an argument then a vegan is for protein so now um and is there evidence that vegans are getting you know like disproportionately less protein or is that just another kind of throwaway garbage statement lots of people make fun of vegans right lots of people make fun of anybody who cares about anything deeply right Portman said, adding, but I'm here to say it's the most beautiful thing to care, to have your heart open so much that someone else's pain feels like your own, to care so much that you'll spend your time making sure that change happens, and that's why you are all here today. <sighs> so bold Natalie Portman is, like a modern day vegan Jesus. Only instead of passing fish to around 5,000 people, she passes around falafels and veganism pamphlets designed to guilt you. So, the notion of, like, she's coming from this holier-than-thou place, um, I mean, I haven't really seen evidence of that, right? It seems like Portman's just talking about veganism. That's a good thing to do. To whatever extent she's passing around leaflets or handing out falafels or just talking about veganism, it's massively appreciated by me and... It's going to be appreciated by anyone else who realizes that she has huge influence, and when she talks positively about veganism, it makes change her veganism. Well, anyone who understands that and values veganism. It's a bit ironic and rather hypocritical that Portman is over here talking about opening your heart to someone else's pain. She cares just so much about these poor animals. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with caring about animals, but meanwhile, she's in favor of abortion. I guess her heart is only open. There's nothing wrong with caring about animals. Well, yeah, I mean, that seems kind of like an understatement. I'd say that there is something wrong with not caring sufficiently that you'd actually support holocausting animals, and I'd like to know what your case is that that's morally acceptable. Or if you don't have a case, I'd like to see you attempt to resist the case for veganism. So he's saying that there's hypocrisy here because she cares about uh, animals, she doesn't care about fetuses. Now, I'd like to make a kind of separation here sort of two levels we could talk on. We can talk psychologically and we could talk logically. So with respect to psychology, I haven't seen any evidence that Portman is like a bad actor. I think that she probably is not in her own mind being hypocritical here. At least I don't have evidence of that currently. Um, I think that whatever opinion she has on abortion, she probably actually genuinely believes it, right? Now, logically speaking, there could be a problem if she is going to say that... Um, you know, uh, an unborn human of some level of sentience has some level of value and an animal of equivalent sentience has a different level of value and sentience determines value. Something like that might produce a contradiction. Um, but I highly doubt that on a psychological level, she is being hypocritical. I think she probably believes what she's saying about abortion. Um, and I think logically speaking, there could be a contradiction there that's possible but we'd need to get a bit more data about her abortion position to really determine that open to the pain and suffering of female cows and chickens but it's otherwise closed and gated when it comes to the pain of the unborn really mm, well what exactly is her position right like i don't think that would be totally fair i doubt she supports like third trimester abortion so there's an unborn being whose pain she is concerned with right so 
I think that generally speaking, the framework for abortion that makes sense to me is like the being doesn't have value at the start when it's just a bundle of cells and it's not sentient because I care about well-being and sentience is a necessary precondition for well-being. Um, and then at the end of the pregnancy, when you've got a fully formed human baby, I think that thing definitely has value and it's definitely murder to kill that thing. Um, except maybe in a situation where there's like some kind of serious threat to the woman's life or something like this. Um, so my position would be that the value of the fetus scales as its sentience develops. Now, f the tricky question is finding the exact threshold where it gains sufficient moral value that its interest can't be outweighed by um, a given interest that the woman might have, like just not having a baby, right? So it's probably the case that when the fetus has just attained the smallest possible level of sentience, it's like less sentient than an ant or something, right? Assuming an ant is sentient. Um, that at that level, maybe the, the fetus's well-being, at least on, on utilitarianism, for example, would just be outweighed by um, even very trivial concerns that the uh, human uh, female might have there, the mom might have. Um, so the, the, tricky, the tricky bit is finding where that exact threshold is where her interests can't outweigh the fetus's interests unless they're very serious interests, something like, you know, maybe there's a threat to her well-being or health, uh, let's say, like maybe the, the pregnancy could like kill her or something like this. So calibrating the exact threshold is hard. I'd have to hear Portman's position to determine if I think there's any kind of uh, contradiction between her abortion position and her veganism position, but just psychologically speaking, I highly doubt that she is um, aware of hypocrisy there and knowingly being a hypocrite. I think she probably believes genuinely what she's saying about abortion and about veganism. Really, it's laughable that veganism is now being mixed with feminism. This is a really poor attempt to utilize an already insane group for a progressive cause. Even PETA promotes an already insane group. I don't know if she's talking or if he's talking about um, vegans or feminists there, but I don't like calling a whole group insane because you can find insane behavior. Like, sure, you can find vegans doing crazy shit, you can find feminists doing crazy shit, you can find conservatives doing crazy shit, you can find people of all groups doing crazy shit. If you want to call a group crazy, I think what you want to do is get statistics on what the people who identify as members of that group believe. Um, and he said it's laughable to connect feminism to veganism. Well, I mean, give it some actual thought, right? I think that, I think it's actually a tricky question. I raised some of my possible issues there. I think that um, there could be an issue of maybe politically polarizing the issue that might not be good. Like, I think that climate change, it, it became politically polarized and maybe that could have been avoided. And if there's a world where that could have been avoided, I would bet that that would be a better world, right? So I do have a fear of something like that happening if we make too many of these kind of arguments about veganism. Um, but then there's also on the other side, the fact that on a psychological level, this kind of argument might be particularly persuasive to um, a feminist. So it's, it's a complicated issue. It's not as simple as just saying feminism stupid, veganism stupid, connection between feminism and veganism extra stupid. It's billboards claiming you can't be a feminist and eat eggs. So now you have to oppose the patriarchy, free the nipple, and never consume dairy or eggs. Seriously, if feminists now have to be- Opp Oppose the patriarchy. Uh, I'm not gonna fucking address all of those things, fuck it. Vegans, that's going to be very difficult considering most of them already look like cows. But while we're on the subject of PETA, is that the case? I'd like to see a statistical analysis of the looks of most feminists. Let's move on to our second story of crazy vegan nonsense. PETA, which has been completely hijacked by the radical left, recently- Is that the case? What's the evidence for that? Recently released a list of animal-friendly idioms your- Yeah, so this is something that even a lot of people within the vegan movement made fun of, right? So, I mean- Again, I kind of, I think I said this earlier on, but all he's doing is basically cherry picking examples of what he takes to be stupid vegan behavior. It's really not at all a case against veganism, right? So if he actually doesn't have a case against veganism, it would be great for him not to present this kind of, uh, to make these kind of videos that give people a bad impression of veganism. And if he does have a case, I'd like to hear the actual case. Just 
cherry picking examples of vegans being stupid and casting shade on a movement that's trying to oppose a holocaust i would actually consider a morally evil thing to do students will love okay last night <laughs> morally evil is that redundant like evil kind of is about morality already checked it's not really a teacher's job to teach veganism on her students teach veganism to her students i mean what would that even on her students like you think she just like sits on them look like okay class the house is on fire and so are you what do you do you stop drop and roll wrong timmy you tell everyone you're vegan harmful Kill i just don't get it like do people actually are there people who sit there and watch that and laugh if so like again it reminds me of like foot soldier fans it's just their mind is like a black box to me i just don't get what's going on in there. I don't understand it. Kill two birds with one stone. Helpful. Feed two birds with one scone. Harmful. Take the bull by the horns. Helpful. Take the flower by the th- Right, so, um, I'll also give my take on this. So, for me, I mean, I could talk about my normative ethics. I'm basically a threshold deontologist, so I have a big concern for well-being. I have a concern for rights. Um, and when I hear something proposed like this, like using animal-friendly language, my question is immediately, how does it relate to my normative ethics? So if nobody is able to make a case that this actually increases well-being or preserves rights, I'm not convinced that it's morally positive. And that's where I stand with uh, this language. Thorns, harmful, bring home the bacon. Helpful, bring home the bagels. Harmful, beat a dead horse. Helpful. Feed a fed horse. Harmful. More than one way to skin a cat. Helpful. More than one way to peel a potato. These idioms are so cringy. They just make me want to die. Or disappear. Or... I, I don't even know. There's more than one way to salt the tofu. The funniest thing about this is the fact we're actually supposed to take these seriously. Are we actually expected to use animal-friendly language now? I mean, what do you think's gonna happen? The family dog is gonna get offended? This goes for most progressive causes and most movements on the left, but if you want people to take your side seriously, stop policing people's speech. And finally, policing speech stops people from taking you seriously. Again, it's just these claims. Like, that might be true, I just don't know if that's true. My case against the language is just that I'm not sure. Uh, what I just haven't seen the argument that it increases well-being or preserves rights. It appears my dying plea for veganism to just stop has been answered. Vegan Cafe infamous for charging man tax is to close after two years. Okay, now I don't know the story there. I'm not sure if that's accurate or not. If that is the case, I think that's morally wrong. I do think that's sexist. Well, this is absolutely horrible. How are they going to bring home the bagels now? But it looks like veganism mixed with feminism is a really beneficial idea if your goal is to be hated and broke. This is just such a funny do- Um, yeah, well, I mean, again, it depends on your take on veganism and your take on feminism. I'm sure there's people <coughs> who would be vegan and feminist and who would not be uh, broke. In fact, it would be interesting if we could see a statistical analysis of the general population versus people who identify as vegan and feminist and what their uh, wealth level is. Dose of irony. This is the thing. I make these points, right? And I understand that he's sitting there trying, <laughs> trying and in my opinion, failing, but apparently a lot of people don't think so, to do comedy, right? So actually asking about the truth behind the things he's saying, some people would be like, oh, like, why are you taking comedy seriously, right? But I just like to poke into what they're thinking. And I just know that this guy doesn't have a sufficiently thorough and logical thought process where he actually thinks before saying something about <coughs> um, about um, feminism and veganism and it making you broke, like whether that's actually true, right? It's just a stupid throwaway comment. It's a great way to end today's video. First of all, who wants to eat at a vegan cafe? Secondly, who- I mean, I'd eat at a vegan cafe. There's some pretty good food there. Do you have evidence that um, people are put off by eating at vegan cafes? Who wants to pay a man tax? Yeah, I mean, I think, <laughs> like, that seems intuitively accurate to me. I don't think many people would want to pay a man tax.
I think that that's sexist. What if I don't identify as a man? Is this an acknowledgement that gender is a little bit more than just a social construct? If men are disadvantaged- Fuck, I hate when I have to cough and make a video. <coughs> Worst time. Um, yeah, so, um, is this an acknowledgement that gender is more than a social construct? Well, actually, I don't even want to get into all that shit. That's like the whole other direction. Your cafe, doesn't that also contradict the notion that men are privileged and have it easier? So many questions, yet so few answers. I wish I could just hear an answer straight from the horse's mouth, but I didn't have an alternative to use. A vegan cafe in Australia that charged male customers 18% more than women is closing down. Melbourne-based eatery Handsome Her made headlines in 2017 for its unconventional man tax and- Unconsensional? That's also fucking weird. Like, where are these fucking weird articles coming from? And for giving women priority seating, measures it took to reflect the gender <clears throat> pay gap. Fantastic business model. However, it appears your business is about as real as the gender pay gap. Turns out a vegan restaurant run by misinterests isn't the most appealing to vegans and non-vegans alike. What's funny is- mm, Why did it close though? Did it close because it went out of business? I don't even want to look. I don't even care. It's I don't care enough about this because none of this is a case against veganism. I think I've like lost my interest because it's just not actually saying anything that cuts against the actual- um, the actual philosophy. Even after the cafe was criticized for a policy that was built on blatant discrimination, they still found a way to blame men. The owners explain how it hoped its man tax would make a stir through our brazen public discussions of structural inequality and oppression, but was taken aback by how it blew up the internet. The way the world responded showed us how fragile masculinity is and solidified the necessity for us to confront and dismantle patriarchy. Yeah, okay, that's AIDS. All right, I give them that one. So if, they, if they're if they saying shit like that, if, that, if that's an actual quote, that's, that's hilarious. That's so stupid. So um, <clears throat> obviously people not wanting to pay a man tax doesn't mean that's, that doesn't have to be the result of fragile masculinity. Right? That could be the result of people being like, um, no, I think your your man tax is sexist and I don't I don't support fucking sexist restaurants. <laughs> so yeah, I mean if this if this is all real and accurate, that's um pretty hilarious attitude to have. Patriarchy it continues. The owners also explained they're lesbians and used to fragile male ego. A vegan, a feminist, and a les Yeah, so you've got some like like perfect example of like the like a stereotype of an extreme progressive running a restaurant doing something stupid not a case against veganism that is kind of funny though lesbian walk into a bar what are you gonna hear about first but seriously you thought feminism was bad now just mix it with veganism and you get this atrocity honestly i just think these bigoted lesbian owners simply need some meat but they there you have it folks, veganism is feminism for animals. Stop using age old sayings because a horse might get mad, and selling pine cones and bashing men is a bad business model. Please give this video a like, comment below, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks everyone for watching. Peace. <laughs> Peace. Um, yeah, so what is my ending statement here? So. This whole video casts shade on veganism by selecting examples that Hunter Avalon takes to be stupid vegan behavior and then ripping on those, right? There's not ever a case presented against veganism itself. If Hunter thinks he has such a case, I'd like him to make it. If he doesn't have one, then I think he should probably go vegan, but I'm happy to present the case and see if he can resist it. So uh, just contact me on Twitter if you think you can defend your position in debate. Uh, I'm sure you can also contact Vegan Gains. He'd be happy to have you on. And uh, we'll see if you can actually hold any of these ideas down when you have someone with some knowledge of philosophy and logic pushing you on your position. All right, uh, that's all for today. If you guys like these videos, support on Patreon. It's uh, linked below. There's also merch down there. And uh, till next time, keep well. <clears throat>